Hi, welcome to Darth Dragon Does Math. Kind of changing up a little bit, if you can't tell. These are not guided notes. These are just notes. Um, I'm going to basically solve... I have eight, eight equations that I'm going to solve for you, okay? Um, it's really just to see a guided example. Um, and that's what I'm doing, okay? Because, so, hope you pay close attention um, and it makes sense. But here we go. So, start out, 5x plus 4 is equal to 24, okay? So, 5x plus 4 is equal to 24. So, if I'm going to solve this equation, my goal is to isolate x. I want to isolate the variable here. I want to get it alone. So, I want to move everything that's not x away from x. I'm going to start. Um, this is something that you don't have to do, but it's extremely helpful by drawing a little line down the center. Um, and the reason I do that is because it helps me keep in mind that what I do to one side I have to do to the other. This is my equal sign. It's basically extended by that line. Um, and so if I want to get rid of this 4, I always want to do the opposite of it. So I'm going to subtract 4 there. But if I do it on one side, I have to do it to the other. So this right here, that's going to go away, right? Because 4 minus 4 is 0. So what's left is 5x. On this side, 24 minus 4, that is 20. All right? So my next step, I want to isolate the x. This is 5x. That means 5 times x. So I want to do the opposite of multiplying by x. I'm going to divide by x. Divide, or excuse me, divide by 5. Divide by 5, divide by 5. 5 over 5 cancels out. That's equal to 1x. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So my answer here is... Four. This equation right here. Let me move that. So same premise. I need to isolate the variable. This time it's f, um, and then this time also I have fractions. So everybody's favorite thing to work with, but it works the same way. So I'm going to draw this little line to help me think. Um, I am subtracting 4 over 5 here. I'm subtracting 4 fifths, so I'm going to add 4 fifths to both sides. Plus 4 fifths. So this gets completely canceled out, and what's left over is 3 fifths of f. That's equal to, so 2 fifths plus 4 fifths, okay? If we're adding fractions, thankfully these already have the common denominator, so I just have to do the top. 2 plus 4 is 6. So this is 6 fifths. Now, I want to get rid of the 3 fifths. Now, we've talked about this before, but let me re um, remind you, if I have a fraction multiplying my variable to get rid of it, Basically, I multiply by the reciprocal, or the upside down, 5 over 3. Um, 5 over 3. Now, the reason that I do that, let's take a little side note over here. The reason that I multiply by the reciprocal is because technically, to get rid of this, this is multiplying by f, I would divide. So I would be saying 6 fifths divided by 3 fifths. And any time we have a fraction divided by a fraction, that is keep change flip. That means this is 6 fifths times 5 thirds. Keep change to multiplication flip. So by telling you to multiply by the reciprocal, I am basically saving you a step. All right, so these cancel out. And that gets F. So now I just need to figure out what this is. Well, um, I can cancel out these fives here, 5 over 5. And then 6 divided by 3 is 2. So f is equal to 2. All right, this one right here. Um, same premise, OK? Just now we're working with decimals. So I'm going to draw this line down. So this is minus 0 0.5. So I'm going to add 0 0.5. Plus 0 0.5, plus 0 0.5. This is going to go away. What's left over is 14, seven, uh, 14z. 3.7 plus 0 0.5. Well, 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry the 1. That becomes 4. 4.2. All right. To finish, I need to... Oh, and that's 1.4, not 14. 
Uh, to finish, I want to divide by 1.4 here, because it's multiplying. Divide by 1.4, and I get z is equal to, um, so 4.2 over 1.4. I don't really like that. I'd rather look at it as 42 over 14. And you can do that. Um, I literally just move the decimal over in each one, um, and I do that by multiplying both top and bottom by 10. Um, and if you don't know how many times 14 goes into 12, uh, 42, can't you just simplify? That's, that's why I like fractions, because I can simplify fractions. So I can say, you know, I know that 2 goes into both these. That becomes 21 over 14 divided by 2. All right, that's 7. And then now it's a problem that I know. It's 21 divided by 7. Z must be equal to 3. Um, and let's take a step step back. Uh, if you're unsure of your answer, one that thing that's really nice about equations is you can always, no matter what, check yourself. You can check yourself just to make sure that you're right. So let's do that real quick. If I say 1.4, now it was z, uh, if that's hard to read, it was 1.4z minus 0 0.5 is equal to 3.7. So that's what it was. So instead of doing z here, I'm going to put 3. So 1.4 times 3 minus 0 0.5 is equal to 3.7. Now if this is true, then 3 is correct. So let's do 3 times 1.4. Um, that's the kind of the same thing as like 3 times 14, right? Uh, 14 times 4, uh, well let's just do it anyways. 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1, 3, 4. One decimal, it's 4.2. So if we do 4.2 minus 0 0.5, does that equal 3.7? And the answer is yes. 4.2 minus 0 0.5, that's like 42 minus 5. That's 3.7. So we did it right, and that's how we can kind of check ourselves. Um, and also you notice, you'll start noticing, oh, the same numbers all the, the whole time. Um, okay. Now this one. This is interesting because I have variables on this both sides of the equation. So let me tell you how I do this. I will always make my variables come to the left and my numbers go to the right. Now I say that is always. I don't always do that. That's not true. But the truth is, is if you do it that way, you will always get the right answer. So let's go ahead and do it that way. So negative 4a minus 4a. These will cancel out. 6a minus 4a is 2a. So 2a plus 7 is equal to 7. Let's take another step. Let's subtract 7 from both sides. OK, so these will cancel out. I'm left with 2a is equal to 7 minus 7 is 0. And this is where I see a lot of students freak out. Um, because 2 times what is equal to 0? The answer is 0. A is the, uh, 0 is the answer. Sometimes that's the answer, and that's OK. Um, but the point is you understand this step right here, that you can subtract um, or add A's to both sides. Um, you can move variables from one side to the other. Another way to think about that would be like, if these were my variables, um, 6 plus 7 equals 4 plus 7. All right, so here, these four are going to get canceled out with these four. So I'm left with 2 plus 7 equal to 7. Um, and then you can just think about the numbers, minus 7, minus 7, 2, two dots over here, because this is going to cancel out. So is that is equal to 0. So one of them must be 0. Um, if this didn't make sense, that's fine. Um, I want this to make sense here. All right, same idea, just fractions, just fractions. So I'm going to bring my v's over to this side. So I'm going to subtract 2 thirds v from both sides, minus 2 thirds v. So this is going to go away, minus 2 thirds v here. Um, so this is kind of tricky because I've got different um, denominators. Um, so, just real quick, negative 2 thirds z v is the same thing as negative 6 ninths v. 
Now the reason I know that um, is because to go from 3 to 9 I multiply by 3 negative 2 times 3 is 6. Alright so I'm going to do 5 minus 6 ninths b. 5 minus 6 is 1 so negative 1 ninth v minus 1 third is equal to 1 third. Alright I'm going to add 1 third to both sides so that cancels out plus 1 third I'm going to have to move up here. So negative 1 ninth v is equal to 1 third plus 1 third is 2 thirds. Alright and finally to finish out this is a fraction multiplied by my variable. To get rid of it I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So negative 9 over 1. Negative 9 over 1. The 9 and the 9 cancel out, the 1 and the 1 cancel out, and the v cancel out. So, or excuse me, in the, in the negative cancels out. So I'm left with the v. And over here, um, you could see that 3 goes into 9, or you could just multiply. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, divided by 3. So v is equal to 18 divided by 3 is 6. So negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. All right, b minus 2.8 is equal to 0 0.8b plus 1.2. Same thing, just decimals. So I'm going to end up subtracting 0 0.8b from both sides. All right, so this is going to go away. And what I'm left with, this is like 1b, right? 1.0b. If it's just b by itself, it's just 1. So 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2. So 0 0.2b minus 2.8 is equal to what's left over here, 1.2. Um, I'm going to add 2.8 to both sides. So that's going to go away. Um, so this is 0 0.2b equal to 1.2 plus 2.8. Well, that's like 12 plus 28. Uh, that's 40 or 4.0. Um, let's move this up here. 0 0.2b is equal to 4. Divide by 0 0.2 because this is multiplied here. Divide by 0 0.2. Divide by 0 0.2. I get b is equal to okay again don't love the decimals in here. Let's move the let's move the decimals over. So this is like 40 divided by 2. I hope that makes sense. 4 divided by 0.2 is the same thing as 40 divided by 2. So that means that b is equal to 20. All right. This one right here. I'm going to show you there these are distributive pro problems. Um Sometimes it's easiest to distribute the 6 through, and I will do that. I don't mind doing that. Sometimes, though, it's not. So I'm going to show you this one by not distributing, but this one, it's I find a lot easier to distribute instead of dividing. Uh, and the reason I'll, I'll, I'll try to make clear. So this one I actually don't distribute. So I can distribute and I can say this is the same thing as 18 equals 6 times 5 which is 30 minus 6 times negative g which is negative 6 g. And we can solve both those problems and I think I will. But here I can also because it's 18 alone over here and I know that goes into 6 I can actually just go ahead and divide this by 6. And what you do one side, you do to the other. So these sixes cancel out, and I'm left with 5 minus g. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So here, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Minus 5. I get negative 2 is equal to negative g. All right. So remember, the reason I blocked this off is to see what's left. There's a negative g left. So I see a lot of people say there's g left. No, it's negative g. So if this is true, this means that g is equal to positive 2. 
g is equal to positive 2 and I just basically reversed the order there and then made both of them positive. This one right here, and it's the same question, So, but I've distributed. And let me tell you this, that you will always get it right if you distribute. So if you don't know whether or not you should divide by 6, don't divide by 6. Just distribute and you will always get it right as long as you, you do those parts well. Um, so anyways, so I'm going to subtract 30, subtract 30, 18 minus 30 is going to be negative 12. So negative 12 is equal to negative 6g. Divide by negative 6, that cancels out. Divide by negative 6, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So 2 is equal to g, which is what I got right here. All right, this is the last one. This is the last one, so you guys can take a breath. If I were to divide this by 3 from the beginning, this would divide by 3. That would divide by 3, which is fine because it's divisible by 3. But then 10 would divide by 3, and I don't like that because 10 is not divisible by 3. Neither is 31, so I don't want to do it. So instead, I'm going to distribute. So that becomes 18 minus 12x minus 27x equal to 10x minus 31. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to continue to simplify this side because these two x's here can go together, right? I can combine those two. So this becomes 18 minus, tw uh, they're the same signs. So if they're the same sign, I can add them together. 12 plus 27 is 39. And what you see is every step makes <coughs> the problem a little bit simpler and a little bit simpler and a little bit simpler. So I'm going to subtract 10x because remember I like bringing my x's to the left. Subtract 10x. So this becomes 18. I'll move it over a little bit. 18 minus 49x equal to negative 31. So I'm running out of room so I'm going to write it up here. 18 minus 49x equals negative 31. Subtract 18 from both sides. Minus 18. Negative 49x. Well, 31 plus 18, well, that's 49. And it's negative. So negative 49x equals 49. So anytime you see that, it's x equals 1 should be screaming at you. Um, but just to hit it home. That cancels out and that negative 49 over negative 49 is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1 here. Alright, again, let me just point out a couple things. One, <clears throat> there's multiple ways to solve any equation. Okay, not one. So I just showed you one way. The, um, so keep that in mind that if you want to do these a different way that's fine but you, you, the goal is to do it well and to do it precisely so you need to work on that two every step you take is a step in the right direction if done correctly so as long as you add two to both sides you're good golden as long as you multiply everything by two to both sides if you're multiplying that's fine just make sure that you're always doing one step at a time and that you're keeping both sides of the equation equivalent All right. Math.